Okay, we are back. This is Tech Math 2, and we're on Chapter 2. We're looking at vectors. So 2.1 is um, vectors. Let's take a look. So a vector is, it looks like a ray. It's got a starting point and an ending point, a defined distance, and a determined um, angle that it's, it's going on, or a, a trajectory. So... Um, for number one, on uh, page 66 in the Red Book, it says, which one of these is an example of a vector? Well, a volume of a cylinder, that wouldn't be a vector. That's a volume. But a train traveling 200 kilometers in a 225 degree direction, that would definitely be a vector. That's describing a vector, all right? Because we have a a distance or a force being applied and an angle that it's going off on. Um, so look at number three on the next page. They have angle or um, vector A is 10. Vector B is 15. It's got just two hack marks there. So each little hack mark looks like it's 5. 5, 10, 15, and 5, 10. And then they want to know what C is. So 5, 10, 15, 20. It would be 20 and it would be in the direction of upward. So 20, do they have uh, pounds? Pounds of force upward. Upward, so it has to have a direction, okay, to be a vector. So number five, what they're kind of calling back to, what is that, that's called a reference angle, right? And so a 120 degree angle from standard position is a 60 degree, right? Because there's 180 degrees in a straight line and you got 120 showing. So there's 60 left over right here. This is 60 and we'll say 60 degrees and we'll say that's in quadrant two. Okay, then I want you to jump to um, number seven and that's similar to this one. But when we look at number seven, they gave you the reference angle and they want to know the standard position angle. So number seven, you have this picture. It's going like this. And they gave you this reference angle of 45 degrees. But they want to know what is theta. What is this angle from there to there? Well, that would be 180 degrees plus 45 degrees. So that's 225 degrees in standard position. All right. Uh, let's get vector addition on the next um, section. So 2.2. And we're looking at uh, the resultant vector, four steps and three steps. Okay, so if you take a look at number eight, therefore a woman is. So look, when we're doing vectors, This one has four steps in this direction. So from here to there, four steps. And then from there to there, three steps. So she walked a nominal length of seven steps. But let's say, let's just pretend for a moment that you had somebody walking at four steps and they're looking at their phone and they're going exactly due east. And then somebody is walking and they're looking at their phone with three steps of force going due north, and they bump into a chair that's on wheels. That chair goes shooting off in this direction because two forces were applied on this chair at the same time. There was a four-step force trying to hit it this way, and a three-step force hitting it that way. 
And so the resultant vector would be right here, the diagonal of, in this case, a rectangle because they happen to hit at an exact, you know, th this was 90 degrees. So there's always two questions coming out of this. They're saying, okay, well, what is the resultant vector? That's the length of the hypotenuse, so this, this right triangle that's formed. And what's the angle at which it goes off of? The angle and the length of the resultant vector, that's called polar form. So we have, we have rectangular form and we have polar form. Rectangular form means that you have points on a, on a graph, like so. Look, if I had this on an on a XY coordinate plane system, this point would happen at four comma zero. That would be right there, all right? This point would be at four comma three. This, if we think of it as two forces acting on an object at the same time, this force hits it with three, this force hits it with four, and this is the resultant vector. That's where the chair goes shooting off to. Okay? So these are usually dashed lines right here and here. But that is the resultant vector. So a force applied at this point, four going directly to the right, three going directly up, this is the resultant vector. And so there are two pieces of information we want which in polar coordinates or polar form. That is the length of this, the resultant vector, which for this problem is very easy to find because we can use four squared plus three squared equals c squared because it's a right angle. And so that's 16 plus nine is equal to c squared. That's 25 is equal to c squared. So c is equal to the square root of 25 or five. So the resultant vector is five, all right? It ends at this coordinate, four comma three. So it was at zero, zero, and it got popped to four comma three. Well, think about that. We just basically added this force, zero comma three, and this force, four comma zero, and the resultant vector, zero plus four is four, three plus zero is three, four comma three. That's the resultant vector. All right. To find this angle, we have to use, uh, let's use our tangent. So the tangent of our angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. And remember how we set that up on our calculator? That is the arc tangent of 3 fourths. And So that is what? Let's take a look, shall we? Here's our calculator. We're going to go second tangent. That's the arc tangent. Tan negative 1 is what it's showing. And then 3 divided by 4, and then enter. So we got 36.86. We'll call it 37 degrees. So there are two forms of this answer. In rectangular form, we can say, well, in rectangular form, the resultant vector ended at 4, 3. In polar form, we would say the resultant vector landed at um, with a resultant vector of five at an angle of 37 degrees. Both of them describe the same point in space. The rectangular form and the polar form are both describing four comma three on the rectangular coordinate system. It's just five and 37 is a little more useful to um, physics people, all right? Okay, so let's take a look. Um, they have another problem like that. And we'll 
we'll set it up. And we'll do two more problems, in fact. So let's look at number 10. It is basically the same scenario. It's just instead of four and three, they use some more complicated numbers. So this was, uh, that was number eight. Sorry, that was number eight. But now we're gonna jump to number 10. And take a look at that scenario that they have here. They have two forces acting on the same object at the same time. So. Um, we'll use, uh, what, the second one here, 50 and 35. Oh, so they have it. So here, here's our coordinate plane. Here's our first vector is going off at zero degrees, basically. And so if the vector is going off at zero degrees with a force of 50 kilograms, and now also acting on this object at the same time is a force that's at 90 degrees and it's uh that's going up to 35 kilograms so the resultant think about it if you had somebody just trucking it they're just sprinting and there's a chair right there and somebody's sprinting there and they both hit the chair at the exact same time the chair the two people are gonna collide and kind of knock into each other. That's not gonna be good. But the chair is gonna go shooting off more in this direction than in the up direction because there was more force acting on it going this way than going up. So it kind of slides off. And again, if we look at the rectangular form, this is 50 comma zero. This is zero comma 35. If we just add up the x's, that's the resultant factor, 50. If we add up the y's, that's the resultant factor, 35. So 50 comma 35 is where they end up. But physics people don't want that. They want to know the length of the resultant factor. They want to know what, how much force was applied to this chair that got knocked you know, in that direction. And at what direction did it go off at? And so you take this 35 squared plus 50 squared is equal to C squared. Okie dokie. So 12, 25 plus 2,500. And that is 37, 25 is c squared, so the square root of it, and it's plus or minus, but minuses can't be, negatives can't be lengths, so we ditch the negative, it's just positive. And uh, we're looking at, uh, it, this says 61, let's look at what it is before it's 61. So 3725, the square root of it, is 61.03. And it, it goes on infinitely, but um, they just want the whole number, so 61. So that is the resultant vector. It's, it's shooting off at 61, which makes sense because look, 50, it was going this way, but 35 knocked it up this way, so it's, it's going longer. It's gonna be with a 90 degree angle there, the hypotenuse is gonna be the longest side, so we knew it was more than 50, all right? Then we want to find that angle, and we can find that. That's going to be uh, the arc tangent again. So tangent of theta is equal to 35 over 50. And so arc tangent is 35 fiftieths. And then we round that to the nearest degree, which is uh, 35 degrees. Okay, so 61 and 35 degrees. So now, what if what if um, they give us one that isn't a 90 degree angle? That was number 10. Let's look at number 11. Number 11, they have two angles. 
like that. Okay, so we'll put it we'll put it back on the coordinate plane system again. So here's my vectors right here and right there, but it's not going off at a 90 degree angle this time. It's going off at a 70 degree angle. So we have 70 degrees between the two. There's 200 pounds of force here. And there is uh, 150 pounds of force here. And now they're using law of sines and law of cosines. I'm going to show you a much easier way than law of sines and law of cosines. So here, let's go d d d d d d d d d d d d The object of the game is let's find this resultant vector. Now I know this was 200 comma zero. So that one is kind of easy to find. You know, that's easy to convert. This one is not so easy to convert, okay? This is 150 and 70 degrees. And we want the rectangular form of that. So if you wanted to go the super long way, we could drop this down, make it a 90 degree, and then use our sweet sine and cosine skills to find the you know y and to find the x. I'm gonna show you a quicker way than that. You could do it that way. So we could have dropped this down like this, this is x, this is y, this is 70 degrees, and the hypotenuse is 150. So we could totally use, you know, the sine of 70 is y over 150 and solve, and the cosine of 70 is x over 150 and solve, do all that algebra. But it's already hardwired into your calculator. And so I'm gonna show you how to transform it from polar to rectangular, and from rectangular to polar. Right now, what we have is a polar coordinate. We have the 70 degrees and the 150. And so, let's see here. I gotta see if I remember this. From polar to rectangular x, We go, I think it's okay. So it's the resultant when you do polar form, it's the resultant vector first and the angle second. All right, that's what's described there. And so now let me show you how to key this into your calculators 83, 84. So this is how we do it. We go second, and then you hit the thing that says apps, but right above it, it actually says angle. And now look at all the stuff that comes up for angle. This is on number five, it says R to arrow PR. So that's rectangular to polar resultant vector. The second one is R to P theta. That's from rectangular to polar theta. Okay, if you go down, it's polar to rectangular X. So go down to number seven and hit enter. Now it's asking for the polar coordinate. It says polar to rectangular X and it's flashing. So now you type 150 comma 70. All right, and then we hit enter. So 51.303 is the X. We'll call it 51.3. That's the X value. Now we have to find the Y value. So how did I do that? I, I went from polar to rectangular on my calculator. I did second apps, which is angle actually and then I went down to polar to rectangular X and I typed in 150 comma 70 and then I hit enter and then it kicked out 51.3 so that is my X value for this point now I'm gonna go do the same thing after you get the hang of this this actually goes pretty quick okay 
So let's do another one. We're gonna do second angle. We're gonna go down. And you have to click the down arrow one more time to see polar to rectangular Y. Hit enter. And now you type in the 150 comma 70 again. And there it is, 140.95. Okay. And we did polar to rectangular, the second apps, that's angle, polar to rectangular, y, 150 comma 70. We hit enter and it kicked out 140.95. Now that does make sense that it's that large because look, this length was 150, all right? So it makes sense that 140 for Y, that's, it's way up there. So now we wanna find this resultant vector. So the 70 we no longer need, it's not there anymore. This resultant vector is what we have our sights on. <clears throat> and to find it, it's actually quite easy. You're taking the X's and adding them together and you're taking the Y's and adding them together. And so like in fancy talk, here, let me get rid of all of this stuff. When you're talking about, um, they, they call that the vertical component and the horizontal component in physics, very fancy, isn't it? The vertical component and the horizontal component. All that means is the X's and the Y's, that's it. We, we just overname everything in this, this whole discipline. So look, 41.3 and 200, those are the, what are those? The horizontal components, basically the X values. So you're just gonna take that and add it to that. You add them together and do that in our head, right? 251.3. And then the horizontal components, the ones going up, or wait, the vertical components going up and down, that's 140.95 plus zero. And so now we have our answer. This is the resultant vector in rectangular form, except we always want the resultant vector back in polar form, which means I wanna know how long the diagonal is, and I wanna know what angle that it's going off at. And so we can't use the, the arctangent, or no, we could use the arctangent because we're not, it's not that angle, this is actually this. X. So we could use the arctangent if we wanted to with the 140.95 and the 200. I don't want to. I'm, I, I want the calculator to do all the heavy lifting for me. And so let's use now from rectangular to polar. So I want to go from rectangular to polar and I want to find R and I'm going to put in 251.3 comma 140.95. And that'll kick out my resultant vector. Then I'm going to do from rectangular to polar theta. And I'm going to put in 251.3 and 140.95. And that'll find my angle that it goes off at. Okay. And so let's do it, shall we? We have an angle. We go down to rectangular to polar resultant. And then we're gonna type in 251.3 comma 140.95. And then we're gonna hit enter. And there is our result, 288.12. That makes sense. Because the 150 and the 200, they were pushing it in the same direction. So the fact that it's 288, it's more than that, that makes sense. And now this angle we know is going to be less than 70, because it, the, the original one was 70. And this one is inside of it, so... We're going to do angle and go down to rectangular to polar and 
251.3 comma 140.95. And then enter 29.2. So we'll call it 29.3 degrees. And that's polar and rectangular. Now, if you look in the book, uh, you'll take a little trip down memory lane. They did it using law of cosines and then law of sines. <clears throat> You're welcome to do it that way. I had a couple of students like that. They did it that way. I think it's a lot more work than you need to do. And um, the more work is the more, you know, chance of writing a number wrong or something like that. So I'm I'm all in the camp of let's use our fancy $100, $120 calculators and um, have it do the, the heavy lifting. So when you look on the next page, it says the resultant vector 288 pounds and the angle that it's going off at is 29 degrees. All right. Cool. We'll pick up on two, three, nine.